What is up folks? Welcome back to another video. I'm filming this uh, intro on a weird camera, so I apologize if it looks weird. Standing in the middle of the field for a very specific reason, I kind of have an announcement to make. It's not really a great one, but here we are. We officially have hogs on the property. That is correct. Our good friend here, Mr. Uh, I'm not sure what his name was. Uh, it's a pretty good size little hog right here, actually. So we've got hogs on the property, it's official. We knew this day was coming. I mean, there's hogs all over the place here in the Southeast and you know, well really all across the South, across the entire country from Texas to Florida. This is the first one that's been killed on my property. Um, it's kind of exciting on one hand because it gives us like a different thing that we can hunt in the future and help eradicate these really harmful animals. But it also sucks because they're really bad for land. I mean, they're gonna destroy they destroy fields like this, guys. They, just, they destroy crops, so all the farmers' crops are gonna be in danger. They pretty much destroy everything, as a matter of fact. They really don't do anything helpful for the environment or for the agriculture of a region. That's why it's open season on them, to shoot them anytime you see one. So luckily, our good friend neighbor Daryl caught this guy slipping. He was out here on the tractor doing some, you know, some tilling, cutting some hay in the rain, and he saw this dude over here just rooting in my cornfield. So he had to go uh, handle business. By the way, if you are a fan of neighbor Daryl, Sit back, relax, sit tight, and watch this entire video because there's plenty of Neighbor Daryl coming up. But anyways, this video is definitely not about hogs. I just feel like that was something fun to share with you guys. Guys, these trails have gotten so washed out. I mean, it is like, look, look at this crap. Look at what I'm about to go through here. I mean, this is so sketchy. Oh my gosh, look at this drop. Jeez. That's the first time I've ever, whoa! Dude, we went on three wheels for a second. Folks, we just went on three wheels right here. Look at what the erosion has done to this part of the trail. I can't even believe what I'm looking at right here. I mean, this is, this is so stinking bad right here. I've actually got some guys, a uh, crew, a company that works around here that's gonna be coming out and helping me with all these trail spots. I've got a few now that are just completely messed up and you almost can't drive them. Like this one, at this point, after what I just saw, I'm not gonna drive this one anymore until we get it fixed, but got some people coming out really soon. We're gonna add that in a future video. That way, if you guys are interested in like the land management aspect of this channel and kind of what it takes to maintain these trails, maintain a large property like this, stay tuned. I love rounding the corner right here, seeing, seeing the house we built on the left, just all scenic, you know? Don't mind me, just sitting here chilling. And you move on down the trail and you got the, the pond. The pond! I'm sure you folks remember the whole pond build, all the stuff we went through to make this creek, to dam up a natural spring creek and turn it into a pond in the woods. Now in that video, I asked you guys very specifically what you wanted me to do with this pond and what kind of fish you wanted me to stock in it. And it was pretty much split between putting a bass in there, putting a trout in there, which I would really be interested in doing maybe in the winter time. But there was one comment that got hundreds of likes and I hearted it because I really liked what the guy was saying. I'm gonna put it up on the screen right now. And that was to make it into a bait pond, right? Like maybe with shiners or a small bluegill minnows, you know, just a general bait pond, which is kind of a smart idea because we spent a lot of money buying live bait. And if you could just have a pond on the property with live bait in it all the time, that would be pretty convenient. Oh boy, we're having some flow problems over here. This is one of the many <laughs> things that happens to this pond. Kind of has to be cleaned out pretty regularly right there. There's probably something we could do right here to make that a little bit better to keep things from washing down the creek into that little spillway pipe. We also recently had a scare in the old pond. There's a reason why those two bags, well, the one bag of gravel, one bag of sacrete, and some more pond liners kind of all weirdly positioned right there. Oh, wow, that was a giant spider web. I just put my head in it. Oh my God. Look at the spider that I just put my head in his web. Camera won't even focus on him because he's so scary. So apparently we had a really bad rainstorm here in the Southeast Alabama region recently, like tons of rain. And I was kind of gone for a few days during that time. So apparently we got so much rain one day that it was like shooting down the hill here and just kind of coming up underneath the pond liner right here on the side. So we had to add some of the pond liner couple different bags of heavy weight just to kind of keep the liner where it is. And I think we're good for now. As you guys might be able to tell though, the water is nice and clean. It stays pretty much clean, as you guys know, with the spring water. It's just, uh, it's so pure. You can just see straight to the bottom. There's just some leaves and stuff right there. Probably need to do a really good cleaning in here one day, but 
you know, all in good time. Oh, wow, guys, I almost forgot to tell you thank you for the support on the shorts drop, guys. We launched the new Guggen Squad shorts, if you missed it. It was a huge success. They sold out like within a couple days, or at least all the good sizes and all the, the colors everybody likes were sold out. But basically, you guys sold them out in like two days. So thank you for participating, and hopefully by now you guys have gotten your shorts and you're loving them like I do. Now, once I decided I wanted to make this pond a baitfish pond, I went to the only place that I know how to find literally anything, and that's Amazon. So while I was clicking around, I may have typed in the term live bait fish. And then I may have found an option where you could buy thousands, literal thousands of minnows delivered to your door, alive, ready to stock your pond. So naturally I bought 2,000 of those minnows. Now while I was on Amazon, I probably should have also purchased some type of an item to help clean the pond, but I have a feeling if I look hard enough, Pool net, Amazon, like $9.99, score. I'm also really hoping in today's video I get the chance to pull these bad boys out. I found them on Amazon as well. I think it's just like some type of a solar powered pond light that you actually stick like in the bottom of the pond. Now I'm not sure with the liner and everything how that's gonna work, but Hopefully we can get these things hooked up and see what it looks like at night because if you ask me, a bait pond with lights on at night, that might look pretty dang sick. Let's check on our buddies here. Well, a lot of them are dead, but that's just kind of how it goes. But a lot of them are alive though. I don't know if you guys can see that. There are in fact some that are alive. Really hard to tell, but there are some survivors. I'm gonna let them acclimate for like five more minutes. They look like they're already acclimated, but I wanna make sure to give as much of them a chance of, at survival as possible. And with the rest of the plans I have for the pond today, we need as many of these bait fish to survive as possible. And it'll make more sense later. Dear God, Andrew, What's where'd up, you man? come from, buddy? Dude, I just show up. Dear Lord, you just emerged out of the fog. That's where I live, man. Out of the mist, you know. out of the woods, you just appeared. Well, you missed one hell of a good pond cleaning session, my friend. Looks like it, man. Yeah, I have the tools to get things done. Okay, I don't know if you know that about me. I think these fish are just about ready to be released. I think the acclimation process has taken place. Now, some of them have died, but most of them are alive. I think these are like uh, goldfish, Andrew. Basic, yeah, it looks like. basic goldfish minnows, probably incredibly invasive to the environment, and we're just releasing them. You know. With no warning. And Daryl's coming, so that's good. He can probably tell us what a huge mistake we're making. So let me hurry up and make it first. Hey! hey, hey. We stock in the pond? Yeah, getting a little bit of bait fish in here. Got some minnows, some uh, goldfish minnows. Goldfish minnows? Yeah. So. <laughs> Got... I'm going to go over the dam. Well, that's also, uh, that's part of it. You think that'll be uh, invasive? I'm that. I mean, it shouldn't be, right? Where are they going? Where are they going? I mean, where are they going to go if they get loose? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're in a creek. Right into a dang raccoon, but Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm going to go ahead and send some and just kind of see how they like their new home here. So they're pretty, they're actually kind of active right now. I think the cold water woke them up. All right, well, here's my first thousand of our little buddies here. Go forth and prosper. <laughs> and they all die. <laughs> well, now some of them were dead. Oh, look at them though, dude. There's a ton that are still alive. That looks so cool. You can see them because they're like that fluorescent orange color. So yep. when they get in the water, yeah. dude, look at this. That's, That's sick, so dude. cool. Damn good bait fish, yo. Cause y'all caught the shit of them over them goldfish at one time. Oh yeah, before, yeah. Oh yeah. The bass love goldfish. Yeah. I bet them little brim in there pick one here and there too. There's four or five little brim in there. Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious. Wow, that's just a cool look right there to have all these little fish yeah. just sitting there. Wow, that is so stinking cool. I hope they uh, continue to acclimate okay, but. They seem like they are. <laughs> I don't see no belly turning belly up. I mean, there's a few that are dead, but I think they were already dead yeah. in the bag. But all the ones that were alive, they're doing, they're just swimming they around. They got the floaters ought to wash off the dam there. Yeah, they should. So what, I, I was mentioning earlier in the video, Daryl, what do you think happened right here where that whole belly, that I'm belly I'm fairly certain what happened. We got that hard rain that one day with us beating 
back and forth. Yeah. That trail we made, I think water come in behind there. And yeah. we had like, like a little you know, gush come in behind there yeah. and filled it up. That's why I put that little Viz Queen on top, keep any more water. But I think what we're hoping, we can get a water hose behind there and siphon it out. Get it out. Doesn't seem to be causing a huge problem, but over time it well, might become one. Well, we staked there, it's probably only to save it. Remember them little Oh, yeah. Well, we, we knew we were going to have some issues at some point in time, but of all the issues we could have, we could handle that. That's the only way it could have got in here because it, the dam's you know lower than this. No, I agree with you. It had to be that big rain. All right, well, let's let these minnows hang out. And the pond stocking part of this video is not quite over yet. All right, folks, it has been like, uh, I don't know, two days since we stocked those goldfish minnows. Let's see how they're doing. What was that? Something just shot like off of the liner right there into the pond. I have no idea what that was or where it went. And this might be kind of tough for you guys to see because we don't have a polarizer on this camera for some reason. Oh, there we go. So we got a bunch of minnow activity right there. Ton of fish right there. They really like to hang out under the spillway right there. You guys can kind of see some along that wall. They really love that fresh bubbling water. Oh yeah, and there's some more all along this side right there. So basically a bunch of them have survived, but that first bag dying really hurt us. But I mean, I could see like a hundred, a few hundred still alive, kind of swimming around, just chilling really. I went ahead and ordered another big bag of the minnows. So I got a thousand more coming a little bit later in this video. I've also got, well, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself here. I got another surprise or two up my sleeve the rest of this video because by the end of the day, or by the end of this video, goldfish minnows are not gonna be the only species in this pond. Let's just leave it at that. Oh yeah, completely forgot about this little gem of a story. Right down here the other day, me and Andrew number two, let me look real quick with my eyeballs so I don't get bit by the said animal. There was a freaking stinking venomous snake right there the other day when we came down here to check on the goldfish. Chorley, what are you doing down here? The dogs just freaking appeared out of nowhere. You guys really love the dogs apparently and you kind of wanted like a dog update, so let's do one really quick while they're just bathing luxuriously in the creek. Of course we got the main man, Charlie, who is just the goat. He's, uh, he's the actual house dog. We've had him for like four or five years now. Definitely a chill, chill dog. Charlie's literally the sweetest dog ever. When you try to feed him food out of your hand, you know how sometimes dogs, even when they're sweet, they'll kind of like snap and they might hurt you. Charlie just takes it like, all slow with like his lips. I can't even explain it. I just, I should just go back to the house, and get a hot dog and show you. But yeah, Charlie's the goat. Then we have mystery dog number one. She has been named Patricia by AO when he was here one time. And that kind of stuck, although my wife hates the name, but she won't give it a name. So what am I supposed to call her? Do you like Trisha? Do you like that? She's a pretty sweet dog. Now she's a puppy, so she's been chewing on a bunch of stuff. So I don't really like that. Hey, what's all this noise, Charlie? Charlie wasn't getting the attention anymore. He didn't like that. Anyways, those are the pups. They'll be uh, hanging around quite a bit on the channel, I'm sure, because they've broken through their invisible fence that they're supposed to have. And they just love coming over here to participate in our shenanigans. Anyways, venomous snake. Yeah, let's get back to that. So me and Andrew too were walking down here one day to check on the minnows and everything that we had put in here. And there was a big venomous snake right there. In fact, I almost stepped on said venomous snake. I didn't have time to shoot it or like to take a, take video or pictures or anything. And it uh, went like under the pond. So now it just lives there apparently. So, but I've got an idea. Neighbor Daryl has spoken of a certain snake trap method where you can use like a minnow trap to trap a snake. I, I don't know, apparently it works, so I'm gonna go get a minnow trap. Well, I can't find a fish trap right now, but I will put one out there. But in the meantime, you guys have really been looking for a big pond update ever since the uh, <laughs> boat Armageddon of the summertime. I don't know what, what you wanna call that. Here's a 360 view. We can see through the whole entire pond from up here. It is so high. <laughs> Don't step yeah. right there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Did you just do that? Yeah. No way. Oh my god. We're moving. We're almost there. We're up. Whoa! We got it. Let's go. Do the yacht thing. Wow. Now we have to move the yacht. <laughs> Guys, talk about a view. We have a hill, a yacht. Snake climbing up top. Oh my gosh. Oh. Dude. We're in here, bro. We are speeding. You guys have really been wondering what the health of the pond was ever since all that happened. So I'll give you guys a little update real quick. Now, the pond is still a little boaty. I mean, she's got a lot of boats going on. 
different areas of the pond. Um, you know, I'm not gonna say that she's not boaty. But if you guys wanna hear something crazy, surprisingly enough, I haven't seen one dead fish. Like I haven't seen one issue since all this happened. Now I understand it might be something that's like long-term over time that, might, that could happen to the fish, but I haven't seen anything. I also haven't seen like any oil or anything or gasoline in the pond other than like a tiny little bit like the day we did all that stuff. Other than that, it's been good. The speedboat's back there in that corner somewhere. It's still like half sunk. Just an absolute tragedy. Another real tragedy is this dang basketball goal. The whole story behind this. We did an entire like super awesome basketball sequence in the yacht Walmart camping video, if you guys remember. And it didn't even make it into the video. Come on, Andrew and Ryan, what the hell is going on over here? Now the pond definitely has a cleanup in her near future. That much I can promise you guys, because I'm not going to leave all these boats in here forever. I just haven't really made up my mind as to what I want to do with the boats yet. I will tell you this, the bass have appreciated all this structure because I just walked this bank and there was like three bass underneath this one. And there was two more on the edge right here that were heading to this. So I feel like some of these little boats that have been just kind of stationary for a while have become the best kind of fishing structure. All right, there's your backyard pond update. Now it's time to kick it back to the mini pond in the woods. Got a special delivery today. Don't show my address, oh, Andrew. What? I see what you're trying to do. So we had the thousand that died on us right out of the get, get, get go, right out of the gate. So we had to replace those guys. Let's see what kind of condition these guys are. Did you know you could buy all these different fish species from Amazon though? Like honestly? I had no idea. Like you, I mean, you can buy so many different kinds of fish, not just like your like typical minnow. There's so many different things out there. Oh man, that looks like a bag of goldfish right there. Okay, they look like they're in pretty good shape. Oh, Wait, yeah. are they alive? Uh, are they all alive on the bottom? Yeah, I think they are, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Dude, look how tiny they are. You almost have to get like up underneath it to see that look at <laughs> their tiny little faces. That's crazy. It's like the ones on the bottom are all like pressed down there because of the pressure. They're just like, <gasps> help. Apparently you just have to open these things as soon as you get them for them to be still alive. But we're gonna go ahead and give these guys a float, as they say, for about 15 minutes. Go ahead and acclimate them to the, the water temp of the pond they're going in. In the meantime, see these performance shorts, man. They're performing. They're looking pretty fire right now. So I cracked open this whole light kit thing here, the solar light kit which the sun is just gone. So the solar technology is gonna be pretty useless. I wanna get these LED lights set up in the pond before dark. All right, so, oh, they sink. We might just have to reach our hands in there and just kind of flip them over, you know? Look at the fish coming through it already. They don't even know what it is. <laughs> oh, no, there you go, Andrew. You what about this one though? All right, we got the lights put in, and uh, it's not quite dark enough to really see the lights yet, but I have a feeling that by tonight, all the fish in this pond will start congregating to those lights, you know? And we'll show you guys then. Got an oh, wow. that, that core stabilization it took to not go in the drink right there? Dude, I was almost wet and cold. Speaking of wet and cold, the exact opposite, dry and hot. Daryl's here. I don't know where I was going at all with that. Hey there. Hey. Just uh, putting some old lights in the old goldfish pond. Oh, okay. Not pulled in her, but I got knot head. You jump in the pond. Do what? I got Allie. I don't want her to jump in the pond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does she like to? Oh, has she ever gotten this one? No. Oh, Allie. No. She's laughing. Got a fish I'll put in there. We put we put two thousand total of like Toledo goldfish minnows. Okay. Basically, they sell them on Amazon. I mean, they're super cheap. You get like a thousand of them for a hundred bucks. But we're putting some other stuff in there later, though. See, they don't know about that yet. <laughs> but we're putting other stuff in here too. I want to put some trout in here, man. That would be sick. Somebody suggested trout, and as soon as somebody said that, I said, "Man, that sounds fun." I don't even know why. It's because I never really mess with trout that much. Not a big trout guy, but I'm willing to learn. Good you wanna see these fish, Daryl? Oh yeah. See them? Yeah. Man, these are in good shape because they just came today. Yeah. Well, they're not good, good shape, but they're they're mostly alive. Mainly orange too, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they're all orange. I think they're, they, it says they're goldfish. I don't know 
what that means. There's probably a bunch of different kinds of goldfish, though, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Well, they, they've hybridized them. Right. Got... You used to have goldfish ponds, right? Yeah. You used to have them all different colors. Fantail, Popeyes, head koi fish. Popeyes? Yeah, them old fat ones that got big old round eyes. I like that. These guys have been sitting in the water for at least 15 minutes. They should be acclimated. They seem like they're okay. I don't know, they're not too lively. Here's a little look in the bag for you folks. There you go. Let's send them to their new home. That giant spider right there. I was just standing right oh, next to it. Dear Lord. People think we're kidding about how many giant spiders there are out here, and they are everywhere. They are everywhere. I don't even know what kind that is. Is that a wolf spider, you think? Yeah, it looks yeah. like it. I don't have a glass on it. That's exactly what it looks like. Those are the kind. They're, they don't bite, though, right? Well, all spiders are poisonous. Really? But some of them will bite out of defense. Some of them will bite you just bite. But all spiders are poisonous. There's really? There's not a non-poisonous spider that I know of. I gotcha. It? But there's, like, levels of venom, too, though, right? Yes, like, yes. some of them can kill you. Some of them just make you That's correct. sick or whatever. I don't know. You know, suppose what the most poisonous spider we have here is? What? Or the daddy long legs. Oh, that's right. I've heard that yeah. before. They just they can't release the toxin when they bite or something because well, they're, they're so small. They can't bite you because they're venom so small. Yeah. I mean, their fangs are too small. Thank yeah. God for that. Yeah. Can you imagine if Daddy Long Legs were that they looked the way they did and they could kill you? That'd be a bad combination. <laughs> they look like something prehistoric. And there's like a hundred in the new cabin. So thank God they're not venomous. All right, little buddies, to your new home you go. <laughs> just all belly up. It's so funny. I think they're just regaining their. Uh, Bearings? I hope so, because this looks like a fish kill right now. <laughs> Look at this. There are about, like okay. A bunch of rice in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's about 20% of them are floating directly to the bottom. Or sinking, not floating. Yeah, they are just... I think a lot of them live, though, this time. These only sat at my house for like an hour, bro. Yeah, if that. Like, dang, I'm not trying to call anybody out. I'm just saying, oh, there's some more fish in here. Oh no, there's some stuck in the knot, dude. Oh no. Look at that, they can't be alive. They haven't had water in two days. Those guys might still be alive. Oh man, you guys got so lucky right there, almost didn't see you. Boom, the pond is a bait pond at this moment. I, I, would, I would feel very confident saying that, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, When you run? I mean, there is like thousands of bait fish in here right now, so this is a bait pond. But, I mean, how long can we honestly leave that as a bait pond? I mean, look, it's a, uh, how many gallons do you think? Did we ever figure out how many gallons are in there? No, we didn't. Okay, well, it's freaking huge. It's like hundreds, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, if not thousands. Thousand. Yeah. So if we have basically an aquarium, like an outdoor aquarium, that big with constant flowing water, temperature control, how can we just leave it as a bait pond? I mean, I loved the idea, but we just, we gotta put some predatory fish in there. So guys, Neighbor Dale just showed us something really cool. So we found this uh, this fence post in the woods. Actually, he found it. And uh, this is, what's this called? Lighter, you said? Yeah, lighter. They call it fat lighter. Yeah. And these back in basically from probably hundreds of years ago up until probably the 60s, they used these for fence posts in the woods to keep their cows and all in. Yeah. It won't rot. That's solid. Yeah. And most of the time that's either what they call an old cat face tree, which is one they carved to make turpentine out of, or lightning struck pine tree. Okay. And when it does, it just like solidifies the stuff with the sap. You know, it saps up in the summertime, it's down in the wintertime. Okay. So if lightning strikes a tree in the winter, it won't make light. Okay. There's no sap up there. So wow. it has to strike at a certain time of year. That just blew my mind. But you can take that right, them little chips right there. Because the outside's wet right now, but if you chip away the inside. Well, the inside's where the lighter is, where right. the, like the turpentine, you can smell that right Yeah. There. God, that's crazy. It smells like uh, it smells like an accelerant, like literally like well, lighter yeah. fluid. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like and that just came off of a wet piece of wood, mind you. So but you take that piece right there. Look at that. And Listen the, to it. It was crackling. Oh, yeah. it will. And the smaller we do these, the faster it light. Look at that. That's 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 about to light right up. That wants to burn right there. Oh, it's fixing to Dude, burn. Dude, this one, this one's even like... Well, if I was split this, is dead on the outside. Right. On the inside where the lighter's at. See how it's, it's bringing that sap sure. out, but it's... like that one. It's, it's all good in. Oh, yeah, that light. Oh, yeah, look at that. That quick. That just came out of a piece of wet wood just sitting in the woods right there. Back when we were kids, when we sold firewood, you'd get some, I guess, split bundles. You would cut up pieces 
you know, that big around that long, yeah. bundle up and sell it with each little firewood. Oh, wow. Yeah. <coughs> you gotta have some lighter to, to get your fire started. Yeah, yeah. in fireplaces. But yeah. yeah, that right there is worth a fortune to camp. I mean, that's, that right there, I guarantee you, it's like 10 bottles of charcoal lighter. Really? Yeah, if you start starting fires. Just a natural. And the good thing about it, you just throw it over there, and it's good 100 years from now. Yeah, you just gotta just, uh, knock it open, split it yeah. open when you want some. Well, there you go. We'll uh, stack some of those up at camp so we've always oh, got yeah. some firewood. Yeah, and that'll build a hell of a fire. That's so freaking cool. The more you know, kids, the more you know. Guys, before we start fishing, got a couple exclusive things to show you guys. Whenever I got stuff in a bag like this, like no official packaging, that means we got some special stuff in here. So if any of you guys went to iCast or if you've been watching iCast videos on YouTube, you probably have seen a lot of these things, but for those of you that haven't seen them, let's find something new. So one of the many products we launched at iCast was the old Lizard, baby. The prototype Lizard. Now we've had these for a while, but this is kind of like the more refined version right here. This is a lot closer to what you're gonna see as a final, you know, final product right here. And I mean, I, I get it, it's a lizard. Like how do you make a lizard unique? But I think we've done a pretty good job of making ours different. And I'm a big lizard guy. I think a lot of people in the South love fishing lizards, especially in the springtime. It's not springtime right now, but you could still definitely use it. I think we got three exclusive baits in here. Let's do, okay. You'll like this one, Ryan. You're a big grub guy, right? I love grubs. Yeah? I love grubs. Check that out, folks. Mm -hmm. The new grub. That's actually a sick color too. It's like the nightclub color, mm -hmm. but check that out. Now, what is what is a grub primarily used for then, Ryan? It, it looks like a leech. That's leech. the idea, I think. So Does north, this pass the test? Oh, yeah. yeah. And on the back of a jig, too. Oh. So why do you like? Why do you prefer the, the the grub to like a crawl trailer or like a something well, more usually, traditional? Well, usually, usually you just swim it. You put it on a ball head and the cast it and swim it. Oh really? And then they just come up and eat it. Like do leeches swim, swim? Yeah. Oh geez. Like, Did really you know that? Big. I had no they idea. Like this and they're gross. That's horrifying and to know that a leech is just so swimming like around yeah, like that. That's big like this. Well, yeah. So if you're a big grub guy, I'm gonna be completely honest with you folks. I have used a grub probably five times in my entire life total, and those were probably fishing challenges where I was trying to use hard lures or something so but hey I think it's cool and I'm willing to learn new techniques for sure this last one is what I'm the most excited about I know a lot of people are check this out folks got your chatterbait or your blade bait trailer right here look at that mm. oh my gosh and just look at just look at how it moves I'm just gonna shake it a little bit like look at how the whole thing like gyrates when you move it yeah, it's got nice. such a good action I mean, you got that little split tail right there. That's gonna swim so good on a chatterbait, man. A little clickbait in the mix. Now that's kind of a crazy color with a little lemon pepper. Mm -hmm. So if you're a big chartreuse guy, some dirty water. That right there. Oh, those are those look really sick, dude. That might that's probably my favorite thing. But yeah, some prototypes. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the lizard just because I've got a Texas rig tied on right here. And uh, oh yeah, predatory fish. So we decided, what if? Okay. We relocate one largemouth bass. Now that we've got a bait pond, I would like to introduce a predatory fish just because I'm a predatory fish guy. I like the fish that eat other fish. So what if we caught a largemouth out of our big pond, backyard pond here, and transferred it to the new pond and just had like a pet bass for the channel. I mean, we got to thinking that little pond is just like an aquarium without a top on it. So obviously he is exposed to nature, our new friend that's gonna be over there, but I think it would be cool to have a pet. So let's see if the lizard will produce that pet. I'm gonna go ahead and get some water in a bucket here for our friend, our future friend. I don't even know what I'm gonna name this bass, but I feel like I'm gonna name it Timmy for some reason. I don't know why that name is resonating in my mind right now. I think if he's small, we'll call him Timmy. All right, transport device completed. All right, catch a fish. Yep, that's always go. the easy slash hard part. I'm gonna go with the old watermelon red. Mine went from clear to algae and fish and quick, didn't it? I know, but don't you worry. I got some grass carp coming. Really? I got some, got about 1,500 bluegill coming. Like the, like the, the, the um, what's a, Shell crackers, right? And then gonna get a couple thousand minnows, probably like ten thousand minnows or something too, Good pretty deal. soon. So I mean, I waited to the last absolute moment, but hey, man. at least you got it done. Yeah, at least I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the fish farm. Get the, f out of Look here. At the universe. oh my god! All right, Mr. Lizard. Oh yeah, I need to flip over here because this is where I was seeing bass yesterday. Like a ton of them were apparently relating 
to this little set of structure. This uh, set of structure is a kind way of putting it, but uh, it was the failed houseboat that AO couldn't get to stand up for more than two minutes. It actually turned out pretty cool, but it did in fact tip over eventually. Yeah, I'm stabilizing. Right, I'm coming out. Oh, I'm coming, we're good. All we're right. good. We're it good. kind of holds. Oh, we're good. Oh, I bet you there's like fish that's gotten like up in there. You know what I mean? In the actual, the bones of that houseboat. Oh, that's a fish. Come here, buddy. New pet. Oh, it's a perfect little pet size too. Oh, he's actually kind of decent size. There he is. Nice. Oh yes, one last shake. Yeah, he's a little skinny, isn't he? Yeah. Dear God, you know what? This is the perfect bass to move because my guy is skin and bones. He needs some, uh... yeah, he's gonna have plenty of goldfish to eat, exactly. Oh my gosh, he's so skinny. I think this is a perfect bass to put in there, man. Because then we can really track and see if we can uh, groom him back to health. If you guys are wondering, we do have some bait coming for this pond. I got all out of whack this year with my ordering, but we have bait coming, so they won't look like this much longer. I think there's just so many bass in here now that are good size, we're just not catching them that much, that they're just eating all the food. But Jimmy, it's your lucky day, man. Jimmy, Timmy? Timmy, dude. Timmy. Gosh darn it, Jim Tim. He'll probably eat all his goldfish in like one day. Oh, he'll be sucking them down as soon as he eats that pond. He's gonna think he died and went to heaven. Yeah, he is. There we go. You're gonna stay just like yeah. that, buddy. Yeah, he's gonna wake up in that other pond and be like, oh my God, there's fish everywhere I can eat. I, oh. I dreamed about this in my sleep. <laughs> he knew this day was coming. <laughs> My mom told me this day would come. Man, I'm so excited for Timmy. He doesn't even know what's about yeah. to happen to him yet. He's got heaven waiting for him. I know you guys think that we're like super good YouTube fishermen, but in reality, we're not that good. So I had a little insurance policy floating right here just in case I could not catch a bass out of my own pond. But did you guys know, Ryan and Andrew, you could also order largemouth bass on Amazon. Dude. Were you guys aware of that fact? Largemouth bass, like tiny little finger laying baby largemouth bass to stock in ponds. Check this out. So I've had them sitting in here for like like an hour, so they should be like perfectly acclimated. You know what? We should be acclimating Timmy right now too, probably. Good point. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna dump a little bit of the water out, probably half of it, and then just put it in the pond. Dude, you could just put the bucket underneath the waterfall and let the water replace itself. God, that's so smart, Andrew. Now there is a venomous snake that lives down Dude, here. Dude, so don't we got, be thinking about these we, negative things. We do have that issue. Dude. You mean like this this whole situation yeah, man. right here? Just let the water replace itself. It, it'll overflow and replace. I like it. I mean, he's... I don't know if Timmy's comfortable right now, but he's Pretty at good. least acclimating to his new environment. Now they call this like a, a pond starter pack or something on Amazon. I'll put it up on the screen right now, but it comes with... Uh, like 20 or 15 brim, I think. And they're pretty small, you know, small little bluegill. But then it's supposed to come with like five or 10 largemouth bass and they're supposed to be tiny. I don't think I've ever seen bass this small. Let's see here. Just gonna try to grab something. Oh, I got a bass, dude, look at that. Look at that largemouth. Look at that. It's tiny and it's, it's like you can tell that's a largemouth bass. It's 100% a largemouth bass. That's crazy. That's so cool. Look how big his, his little mouth is too. He's got that, that large mouth already. And then it comes with a ton of these brim, which are everywhere. Obviously like the most common fish ever right there. So it's got some of those. So basically Timmy's got a whole new menu. My man's got a thousand goldfish to choose from. He's got 20 brim now, plus some natural fish that have gotten washed down in here. Who, who knows what those even are? And then we're gonna have five or 10 little largemouth bass too. So we'll see if they survive the wrath of Timmy because he's so skinny, he might just eat every fish in here. It's also very possible. All right, everybody go to your new home. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a couple dead guys in there. Nice. You just can't escape the dead fish, man. Even if you get them like the moment they arrive, there's still gonna be some dead. I get it. Dude, they all swam off, every single one of them. None of them went belly up, not a single one. You think those are gonna eat some of the, the 
I was just about to say, how much bigger do you think those little bass have to get to be able to eat one of those goldfish? Because they're, I mean, some of those goldfish are tiny. Not that much bigger, these bass they're might be eating these yeah. things tonight. I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. Their mouths are like bigger than the, the goldfish are. 100%. Yeah. That'd be so cool if they're just eating on them tonight. You got dead bread in there? Yeah, a couple. Put yeah, for the, for the fish trap. You got the trap with yeah. you? Oh, yeah. And I, I had a, a tilapia filet, but them, them there would be better. Yeah, Daryl was the one that turned me on to the whole minnow trap could also be used as a snake trap apparently so that venomous snake i was telling you guys about earlier we got something for him we're going to try to catch him these dead brims should be nice and stinky once they sit in here for a couple days so the snake comes in here just like the fish do through yep. this and they just can't yep. come back out yep they can't figure out how to get back out or i'd check it daily he could probably eventually figure out how to get back yeah because he was definitely smaller than this hole for sure yeah. he wasn't a big snake there yeah. it is all right well we'll see got some dead brim in there and that's the thing, see a lot of these dead fish are washing over the waterfall right here. That's probably why the snake is hanging out right here because it's a nice, easy, free meal. So now there's more fish in here. We need to take every precaution to try to protect ourselves. All right, Timmy, I'm gonna trade with you, buddy. I'm gonna put him right there in the water. This is actually where he went underneath right there. He went like up underneath that corner. Yes. He just disappears. He's just living under the pond. He's just standing there like, you know. Just waiting to scare the hell out of somebody one day. All right, Timmy. I love how their colors change when you put them in a live well. Why does they do that? <laughs> is that what it is? That's so terrible. Thanks, Ryan. Dang it, now I feel bad. So well, he's fixing to change back because he's going to be happy when he sees all that bait fish. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's so easy to head grab because he's so skinny. That's also he sad. He doesn't worry about all the nasty boats being in his lake either. That's exactly right. He's, so he's the lucky one right oh, now. Oh, yeah, he's living in a condo here. Look at how beautiful this fish has become, guys. I guess Ryan said that it's stress. He's so skinny, he's got a big head, I feel really bad. We're gonna restock the pond and get it back to good, but for the time being, my man has as much food as a bass could ever need. Let's just kinda sit him in here for a little while, and make sure he's acclimated. What if he just like let go and just started hammering goldfish? That just, would be awesome. Just like top water explosions left and right. What do you think, buddy, are you good or what? Oh, there he goes. He's just swimming off. Oh, that's sick. So yeah, it looks huge in he this tiny pond. Fun. He probably went straight to the flowing water, if I had to guess. I mean, he could also be exploring because it's his new home, you know? Very true. So we should put some structure in here for him, honestly, shouldn't we? I agree. Just to protect him. Yeah. Yeah, that's There probably... will be animals probably come through trying to eat him, you know? Can raccoons swim? Oh, yeah, all, all animals. So ra a raccoon but could I, dive I, in this pond and catch that But I don't think? think, yeah, I don't think a raccoon would get in there and catch him because he can't, he's not going to be able to dive down and get yeah. And that's so slick on that Viz Queen. Yeah. He's, that coon's gonna go in and he's gonna come out. I'm just trying to think like what could kill. An otter could. Otter. otter would. So if it disappears, it's most likely an otter. Otter, right. Yeah. yeah. Or he just jumps, commits suicide, and just jumps into the creek. Yeah. But so. if I had, if, with this, you know, these otters follow these creek systems. Yeah. So if, I, if, he, if he showed up dead, you'll see, if it's an otter, you'll see fish bones where bones. he'll eat it, he'll eat it yeah. right here. Yeah. I remember you've told me that before, and we found bones by the backyard pond many times. Large mouth right there. There's a little large mouth on top of the water. Check him out. Look, oh, he's, yeah. look at him. He's looking That's for cool. his first top water blow up. All right, folks. So fast forward about like seven to ten days. I'm not really sure exactly how long, but since we relocated Timmy the bass from my backyard pond to this pond right behind me, it's been about seven to ten days. Let's see how he's doing. Now it's always kind of tough to find Timmy in this little pond. Believe it or not, it's a lot harder to find them than you would think. I tell you one thing, I do not see a single bait fish in here. And I am not joking with you guys. I don't see one of those goldfish minnows anywhere. He likes to hang out right here along this back wall. So the trail's out there, spillways there, basically directly across from the spillway. Come on, you little joker, where are you? I think he's hiding down there and like, there's like this little shadow because that's the deepest part of the pond right underneath where the spillway flows in. Oh, wow, that was almost bad. Also, there's a solar panel right there just getting a, a load of sunlight. So I don't know why these lights have been so messed up. Like, they worked when we first installed them. I don't even know if you guys saw a clip of them working, but they did work. I think Amazon just owes me some new dang lights. I found Timmy. There he is. Look at him. I'm so proud. Oh, there we go. You can see his face. That's so cool. Guys, he's hanging out literally where I said he where he did. 
Like that's the exact spot over there against that back wall. If I zoom out, you'll see that's where I was walking and saying he likes to be. There he is. He's doing fine. He is alive. Uh, I'm kind of shocked. The only reason I'm saying I'm shocked he survived is because I have had some bad experiences relocating bass in the summertime. There's something about this time of year when it's super hot, the fish's metabolism is very accelerated and they're just stressed out. They're just prone to die easier. So the first three days Timmy was in here, he did not move. He sat right there where he is right now and he didn't move. So I was worried about him. I really thought he was not gonna be able to acclimate and for some reason, maybe he was just so stressed and maybe you know, really skinny, malnourished, that he would die. But he has survived. Not only has he survived, I think he's been thriving because I do not see a single bait fish in this pond. I'm like not a brim, not one of those largemouth bass, not a single one of those Toledo goldfish minnows. I ended up putting over 2,000 of them in here. No natural forage, nothing. I just walked around this entire pond and I didn't see one living thing in the pond. Now that's kind of a good news, bad news type scenario, right? Because the good news is Timmy's alive and he's apparently doing well. But obviously the bad news is now he does not have any more bait to eat because all the bait that was in there is now in his stomach. So in a future video, we really need to restock this pond, maybe just dump a ton of creatures in there, maybe put some cover in there, that way those bait fish can survive. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff we still have to do with this pond. I really hope you guys enjoyed us turning this pond into a bait pond for a little while and then turning it into a bass pond but look i'm really open to putting trout in here this winter that was a really cool idea by whoever made that suggestion actually a bunch of you guys did keep flooding that comment section guys give me all the recommendations give me all the ideas you have all the fish species you want to see in here literally anything you guys can think of i need that feedback from you make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button on these property videos guys i got tons more ideas coming I hope you guys are ready for them. I know you are. You're the best subscribers on YouTube. I say it all the time. I'm going to continue to say it. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you guys next time.